Today, I'm going to visit a temple split in half by the Thai-Burmese border and things go very wrong whilst attempting to drive a dusty track back road to Pai. This is Don't Look East. Whilst the borders of Myanmar are currently closed, I'm doing the next best thing and travelling down the entire Burmese border with Thailand to learn a bit more about the place and meet some of the people. Sounds good, doesn't it? Well, why don't you join me? Let's go. Good morning. I'm in Arunathai, a small town in northern Thailand. And today I am going to try and drive to Pai by the back road. Let's go. After leaving Arunathai, I headed up some spectacular mountain roads to get to the Shan town of... However, it wasn't long before something didn't feel quite right with the bike. Oh. Yeah, that'll be it. As I'd broken down outside an army base, the Thai army immediately put my bike on a truck and drove me to the nearest mechanic. What absolute stand-up fellas. Okay, okay, I waited for my tyre to get fixed while the soldiers eyed up the big bugger machetes that were on sale. After that, it was back on the road. Okay, come cap, come cap. All right, so just had my tire changed. I got a puncture. I was just thinking to myself, well, earlier I was thinking I haven't had a puncture in a while. No, indeed I hadn't. And so whilst I was trying to decide whether or not to travel on a dirt road later, I thought, well, at least I've had today's flat tire already. Nothing should go wrong from now on. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's not how life works, by the way. Anyway, back past the army base and through the mountain roads to... <laughs> and then on to the border. The main point of interest here is the temple that is not only smack bang on the border, but actually has the border running through the monastic complex itself. During the 1980s, in the heyday of the Golden Triangle opium trade, this area was not strongly controlled by the Thai or Burmese authorities. As such, where the border lay was immaterial to the people that lived here and crossed it every day without knowing. That was until both countries firmed up the definitions of their borders with military bases and found that this temple straddles both. This has caused some problems when the Burmese military have come to use the monastic space as a military area, not pleasing many of the locals or the monks. Yet another high-tech border gate in operation here. This bamboo barricade allows the monks to come and go between the various parts of the monastery. The army do have a base over there. Look, you can just about see the flag if you squint. But if we go to this lookout spot, we can get a clear view of the ordination hall on the Myanmar side. And then down these steps to yet more army dugouts. Who needs Patio or Phuket when you can tour rural military installations, eh? Yeah, I think I might be doing this Thailand tourism thing a bit wrong. Anyway. Also at this complex is a tomb of the famous one-armed Shan warlord, Zhao Khorn Zern. Easy for you to say. We actually saw a portrait of him with Khun Sa over at Khun Sa's headquarters way back weeks ago, whenever the fuck it was. As you can see by this impressive monument and house dedicated to the man, he was very important. His Shan soldiers and himself eventually joined forces with Khun Sa and paved the way for what would become Shan State Army South. Okay, so this guy's a Shan freedom fighter. Struggles against Burmese communism. Sacrifices left at home. <laughs> if you've never had the pleasure of seeing one of these before, this is an old school manual petrol pump, straight from the barrel. You tell the guy how much you want and he notes how many notches the fuel goes down by in the glass container. Very common in the countryside. I'm sure this is not the last one we will see. Okay. 
After that, it was time to leave. I was faced with a bit of a dilemma. I had to be in Pai that evening to meet one of my family. And whilst the crow flies, Pai is just over the mountain range. To take the main road to Pai from here would take five hours. However, looking at the map, there's a dirt track that would cut straight across and take half that time. Obviously, only an idiot would attempt to cross such a back road on a rented semi-automatic bike. Well, there's a sign, so... Um does anyone like to find out? That's not by driving into a ditch. Let's go up high. So I went down the turn off to Pi to see what condition the road was in. It led down paved country tracks for quite a while, but after this spell on concrete, it turned into hardened mud that had been flattened by Toyota Hiluxes. This was actually very pleasurable to drive on. And for a moment, I started to believe that this mountain drive was actually going to be better than driving the main road. Yes, again, I'm an idiot. So by the time I'd reached this army crossroads and saw this sign to pie, I was brimming with confidence. What could go wrong? Well, let's time it and see how long it takes for me to come off my bike, shall we? Praise your bits now! Come on, come on, quick, quick! Bet, bet, bet! Betting ends! That's right, two minutes and 48 seconds after leaving the crossroads, I'd already come off. A sure sign to anyone with a brain that they should stop and turn around. Yes, I'm an idiot, all right? When things go wrong whilst traveling, most YouTubers make a big song and dance out of it and really ham it up so they can get a clickbait video of them in some peril, looking scared or distraught in the thumbnail. However, my contrary nature made me do the exact opposite. I didn't take any selfies. I didn't talk to the camera. I didn't even talk. In a rage, I went completely silent, apart from the odd groan, obscenity, or sigh. Oh, well that was unpleasant. Don't worry though, I brainstormed some ideas with the focus group, and we've come up with a way of fixing this. Almost like I'm a real YouTuber. Almost. This being Thailand, every now and then I'd be passed by three people on one motorcycle. With the motorbike being older and less suitable for this road than the one I was on. This at least gave me some hope that I'd make it out alive. Oh, and Bertie Big Bollocks over here who passed me by and didn't even give me a wave. I see you mate, I see you. I'm not sure it shows up well on camera, but this road is rough. Firstly, it's steeper than it looks. And secondly, it's just dust. Just dust and stones, going up and going down. So over the next couple of hours, what followed was a bit of creeping upwards and a lot of skidding downwards, down dust-covered stone-filled tracks, rutted and pitted by rainfall and the passing Toyota Hiluxes, leaving no obvious or safe path to follow. Even when I wasn't falling over, it felt like I was just about to, as any loose stone or pocket of dusty sand would send me skidding. To make matters worse, every now and then, you'd be driving along the side of a steep drop off the mountains. It wasn't all pain. Periodically, it would ease up, and you'd think, thank Christ for that. I can handle this. Haha, <laughs> no chance, pal. Back to the dust for you. And every now and then, I'd stop and pull out Google Maps and be like, how much more of this nonsense have we got left? And then, once disappointed with the answer, get back to it. Tumble number two. Look at this fine powdery bull. It wasn't that long after rainy season and already it's a nightmare. Oh, fuck me. No thanks, but I did go back and check the damage I'd done to the ground. I think it'll live. But 
but I'd really shagged the right brake handle, which was now bent all the way round like a cow's horn, which is good because the driving was far too easy. I needed a new challenge. Back on the surface of the moon and things are getting spicy again. Good save there, pal. In hindsight, it's actually pretty beautiful out here when you aren't concentrating on not falling over. Another great save. Sign him up, sign him up, sign him up. Okay, so for whatever reason here, I decided that going down in neutral wasn't good enough. And if I turned the bike off, I'd be able to freewheel down easier. Yeah, much easier. I'm not going to keep on banging on about it, but this was a miserable, slow, exhausting, stressful creep through the dust. Please don't come this way, unless you've got a decent bike and you know how to ride it. Alright, well that was pretty miserable. First Hilux I saw, which was actually some relief to see people out here. But you better believe, were it going in my direction, I would have definitely paid him to put the bike on the back and drive me the rest of the way out of here. How many topples have I had now then? I've stopped keeping count by this point, to be honest with you. Ah, oh, Jesus. Where's that f***ing temple? Yeah, that about sums up my mood at this point. Stay hydrated, kids. But just when you lose all hope, things can turn around. Oh. Oh, there's a sign. Oh, there's a sign. Oh, look at that. After what felt like an eternity, I started to sense civilization. Signs first, and then a house, and then soon we were at a village with an ancient temple and the actual Pi River. Sweet relief! Oh look, it's Bertie again. Glad to see you made it out okay. Oh no, don't worry about me, pal. Tosser. Alright then, let's give it a go. Fucking hell. Oi! off. Look at that. Fuck off. Why is there no central strut? Fucking hell. Hello. <laughs> Am I just in someone's field now, is it? It looks pretty nice, doesn't it? Nice. That's all right, isn't it? Some, oh, look how dusty you are. That's all right, isn't it? Some old ancient boy that we found whilst the, in the middle of nowhere. Aside from the road that we just come down, I can see why people lived here historically and why people live here today because some pretty nice flat land in between these mountains buffalo roaming cows roaming it could be worse it could be worse nice hey okay. nice to see a beautiful old stupa isn't it so um all right <sighs> almost there i hope those hippies have got some beer for me in pie Oy. Let's get to pie. I hope those hippies have got some beer for me in pie. Let's go. And that was it. I was so relieved to be back in civilization. I didn't film anymore. But I still wasn't in pie. In fact, I wasn't even that close. From the turn off to here is 15 and a half kilometers. And it's taken me an hour and a half. I still have 27 kilometers to go. But luckily, after this village, the road got a little bit better. Not much. It was still slow going with lots of stones. But a little bit better anyway. And then finally, I was in Pi. A cold beer was never needed more. No video from Pi from me next time because frankly, I don't like it and I don't find it that interesting. But the roads out of Pi towards Mei Hong Son are filled with stuff. So I'll see you next time as we continue to explore the Thai Myanmar border area. See you then.